Weasel here. It's January 18th, 2014. It's been about 10 months since I've uh, done a video and uh, uh, my last one was with a 1976 Dodge Power Wagon where we uh, ran it on a gasifier, an Inbert style gasifier uh, last uh, winter and uh, a few things have transpired since then and since then I've upgraded to my truck to a 2000 Dakota with a 4.7 liter uh, V8 and uh, we've also gone in a different direction as far as the gasifier goes. This is a Wayne Keith style gasifier in the back of the truck uh, along with some ancillary equipment to uh, produce uh, wood gas. Uh, today uh, we're going to uh, run the gasifier and test the wet scrubber that is uh, in the box and we'll go around and uh, point a few things out so everybody understands what I'm trying to do here and uh, we're gonna basically run the gasifier, run the wet scrubber and see if we can produce some uh, good clean gas uh, through the wet scrubber. Uh, and uh, we're going to run probably about 100 pounds of wood through it, I hope, and see how that, uh, that fares and see what kind of uh, uh, flare we get as well as uh, what the gas looks like coming out the tube. Um, also, uh, by popular demand, I've had to have Bulldog, my uh, good friend here, run the video from CNJ Crossroads Photography. He's running the video, so now we get a decent video. All right, we got a spring-loaded, I have a spring-loaded uh, lid on my gasifier, so that's for my pressure relief. And uh, it's all gasketed with drip edges and everything, and my hopper has uh, uh, got a pretty good capacity, but my char bed is about four or five inches below the nozzles. I did not have enough char to start the gasifier, uh, so instead of using the, the typical torch, I'm going to do a Herb Hartman. I'm going to go back to my wood boiler and dig me out a bucket of hot coals and throw it in there then I'll start throwing some bags of wood in. Anyway, I have a uh, condensate tank for the hopper and that is um, uh, inside the box and with a quick uh, sanitary connection here. The next one is the drop box slash heat exchanger which happens to be a double wall and uh, I actually have a blower attached and I actually move air on the outside uh, wall and then there's a discharge port down there where the hot air comes out and basically I just got it hooked up so uh, I can use that for additionally, additionally cooling the gases. All right, after the uh, heat exchanger drop box, this is my fresh air in by the way, but after my heat exchanger drop box, I've got my wet scrubber right over here, and it's got two columns and a sump tank. It holds about 10 gallons, it has about 7 gallons of uh, hydraulic oil in it right now, and uh, basically we're going to run this wet scrubber and to see how well it does on scrubbing the gas. Uh, but until I get the gasifier up to temperature and have a chance to season it, I'm really not going to be going through the wet scrubber. My gas is coming out here and it's basically going to exit out here and uh, via the blower. Uh, once I'm up to temperature, I will switch these two covers and then I will turn the pump on and we will then diluge the uh, packing in the first column which is stainless steel wool with oil and uh, we will try and scrub that gas as it's passing down through and uh, that's what we're going to do. This device here happens to be my distribution pan that will sit down inside of here like this and basically we flood this pan with oil and it all runs out and down and cascades down through the stainless steel wool. At the base of the first column is a cone. That cone is right in this area right here. And right after that, the gas has to make a right turn into the second column, but all the oil and soot and whatever the oil has picked up will continue down into the lower portion of the sump where there's a little bit of uh, pathing done inside. So when the uh, circulating pump is picking up oil, it's not picking up any water and it gives the soot a chance to settle out uh, before um, the pump picks it up. So that's basically what we have. I have a uh, 3 GPM gear pump that basically is uh, what pumps the oil uh, up into the first column, or I'm, I'm sorry, yeah, into the first column. Then, however, over here I've got a battery which I've just thrown in the truck so I can run my uh, gear pump and run this blower. And I've also then have a oil cooler here, which uh, is uh, what's left of a dehumidifier fan. And a friend from work uh, loaned me one of his race car oil coolers so I could uh, have an oil cooler in the system in case the oil gets hot, which at some point it should, but it's about 10 degrees out today, so I do not know just uh, how warm the oil is going to get. 
But continuing on, I've put a magna helix on the uh, uh, on here so we can measure the pressure drop across the wet scrubber. And then I also have a thermocouple on her so I can see what my gas temperatures are. And then I have a pitot tube built into my tube right here. And between the pitot tube and this ball valve, I can uh, change the CFMs of the blower to simulate uh, what I would call real-world driving with my particular vehicle since I've had a chance to chart and graph everything. So I have a manometer, I've got a, uh, uh, a temperature indicator with a grate, a thermocouple on the grate as well as on the tube plus a spare thermocouple and an infrared thermometer to do some additional testing. So having said that, I'm going to go get a bucket of uh, charcoal, throw it in the hopper and uh, light this thing off. Throw a bag of wood in right away on top of it. Close it up and start it. See what happens. It's all pine. Okay. Let's see what happens. Uh, 0.16, 0.18, which is about 
30 to 40 CFM. Um, Perfect dice about 50. she barks or not I couldn't tell all right we've uh, shut the gasifier down for uh, about five ten minutes we switched the covers so now my oil entry is into my first column where the oil spills into the distribution pan and then from there it cascades down through the stainless steel wool along with the gas as the gas travels down along with it and then the gas will cross over and come back up the rear column out here and out so uh, now this is set up the way it would normally be and I have a magna helic on there to measure the pressure differential or pressure drop across the wet scrubber just as a monitor and, uh, and now what I'm going to do is I'm going to open the valve for my pump and then I'm going to turn the pump on just to make sure that we should see oil coming up that hose and into there. Basically it right now, we are circulating oil, but the oil is very cold. I don't know if it's going to cavitate and how well it's going to work, but we've got a fair amount of oil in there right now, and she's cavitating right now because the oil is so cold. So I might find myself having to cycle the pump on and off as the pump recovers with the extra thick oil, but that's not going to keep us from running. So we're going to go ahead and pull the cork and fire it back up now. But this time, if we can, we are not going to turn on the spark ignition. We're going to leave it off. Across the um, wet scrubber. 
running. I got my fan running here on my oil cooler. It's uh, warm air coming through, so we know we're cooling the oil down. Uh, one of the things that has occurred, though, is uh, without having my spark ignition turned on, the uh, flare lit itself. Uh, that concerns me a little bit. I don't know why it would. There it went out finally. Okay. I don't know what made it come on, but uh, as long as uh, nobody's in harm's way. temperature is uh, 13, 12. I'm running about 0.8. I'm probably running about 35, 40 CFM. I kind of dialed it down a little bit. We're still pumping oil through the oil cooler. There's definitely some heat coming off the oil, so that's doing what I want it to do. And uh, my discharge here coming off my heat exchanger, about 130 degrees, so I'm pretty happy with the uh, nice warm air coming off of here. So that means the heat exchanger is pulling some of the heat out of the gas. the flame on the uh, uh, tube so we could just look at the gas coming through. This is the gas coming through the scrubber. Um, I was hoping that uh, it would be a little more transparent than that so I really can't say just how well I've scrubbed it or if this gas going up to my engine is going to uh, give me any grief in my plastic intake manifold. I guess time will tell but the gas temperatures are down where I like them to be and uh, I think uh, I'll put a, I'll still put somewhat of a cooling rack on the truck, but it won't be much of one. Uh, I just wish I had a way of uh, doing a parts per million test as to just how clean that uh, gas is coming through. We're on about 1,300 degrees. We got uh, a fair amount of wood in the hopper. We've been burning a little paint off as it gets seasoned. Uh, other than that, I think the test has gone pretty well. I just wish that uh, it was uh, not quite such a visible gas coming out the pipe. All right, we're uh, flaring the gas off right now. I got it turned down a little bit. My great temperature is about 1330. Um, some of the temperatures are within, within reason. My gas temperature is nice and cool. So uh, we, we, I just put two more bags of wood in. We're gonna let it run for a little bit longer and then just shut the whole system down. And at some point when everything is definitely out, I will take a look at all my moisture content. 